Exodus chapter number 15. Exodus chapter number 15. I'll, I'll also, um, a little bit later on, I'll be over in Psalm 137. So Exodus 15 and Psalm 137. We'll be going back to the New Testament just to read and look at a couple of verses back in Ephesians and Colossians as well. And so I think you're all pretty much familiar with the Bibles on where everything is. But uh, just to let you know, I like to give you a heads up, I guess, to where um, uh, I've got a mark. And so it gives you maybe a, a little bit of time to get over there to where you can see it. And so um, uh, we'll deal with this tonight. Um, I, I, I got a, uh, I was, of course, put a call out uh, earlier today, you know, about having service today. And there's a few people I text. I text, uh, I text Eric, and uh, I text uh, Jerry and Rebecca and Dakota and Renee and their family, the different uh, different ones that aren't on the call system yet. And so I, I text them to let them know that um, uh, we would be having, finally having, you know, been texting them, letting them know that we're canceling service. So I wanted to text them, let them know that we were having service. He made the statement, he said, uh, he said, the kids will be so excited when they get home from school uh, that we're having church. And I thought to myself, hey. Lord, I, I hope that everybody has that, that, that childlike excitement hey. to know that we're able to go back to church tonight. I, I meant to say that earlier, but uh, I, am, I am so thankful to be here tonight. But um, I want to deal uh, tonight with something I, I, I wanted to, it seemed like I got kind of started a couple of different times. Um, I, I appreciate the fact of being able to record things. I really do, but there's not a time that I record where I don't think I'd love to be in the church preaching this message. But, but I, I am thankful that we have that. I want to go back over to Deuteronomy 28 and deal with some more stuff out of that chapter. A lot of the things that we see taking place today because of disobedience uh, in our nation, in the world today. And then also, you know, at, at one point in time, whenever the last time was, we were dealing with Nehemiah a lot and talking about the uh, hindrances of the work and talking about the end, uh, we talked about the external, we're going to talk about the internal hindrances. So I had a lot of different things that I had in my mind like, like I need to kind of finish that up. Um, but it, it wasn't where the Lord wanted me to be. And I, I want to give you what the Lord put on my heart tonight rather than where I thought my head needed us to be. I, I know that you said it up, Richard. That's, that's what you ought to do. Well, sometimes you can get in your own your own way. Um, and I just want to mind the Lord tonight. Um, I hate to start multiple things and then have to go back and, and, and cover uh, things, but I believe this is where the Lord, I know this is where the Lord has us uh, be tonight. And so, in Exodus chapter number 14, I want you to look at verse number 31, then we'll go to 15. I know I told you 15, but I just want to look at verse number 31, and we'll read verse number 1 of uh, Exodus 15. And so, in Exodus 14 and 31, it says, And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. In chapter number 15 and verse number 1 says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Now I want you to turn over to Psalm 137. We're going to read a couple of verses there. And we'll pray and ask the Lord to bless on his word. But in Psalm 137, and we'll read the first four verses here. It says, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps on the willows in the midst thereof. For they, for there they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Verse number four asks the question, they ask the question, 
how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, once again, God, we ask, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, here tonight. And Lord, we've already prayed once, but Lord, we just feel the need, Lord, again. God, just pray in God that you not let anything hinder the service tonight. God, I pray, Lord, you'd forgive us, Lord, where we have failed and come short, shortcomings, Lord, anything, Lord, that would hinder us individually. God, that you would forgive us, Lord, of our many sins. Thankful, Lord, that you're, uh, we're thankful, Lord, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God, I pray, Lord, for this message, Lord, here tonight. God, that it may help the hearers. God, I pray, Lord, that it may help our church. And God, I pray, Lord, that we be able to convey the things, Lord, that we've studied out. And God, I just pray, Lord, that it be able to go forth. Lord, reach that one that's lost and undone. And Lord, I pray, God, that it help that one that's saved. And Lord, maybe down and out. God, we realize, Lord, that your word can do multiple things, Lord, in one message. And God, just help us, Lord, to be real. Lord, help us, Lord, to be right. And Lord, help us, Lord, to rightly divide, Lord, your word here tonight. God, help us in all that we do. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. As we look at this, uh, I wanted to, I, I thought about in, in Psalm 137. I don't know exactly how I want to start off what I want to say, but verse number four, he says, How shall we sing the Lord's song? In a strange land. Psalm 137 is dealing uh, with the children of Israel as they are in Babylonian captivity. It talks about they are by the rivers of Babylon. It says there we uh, sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. So we realize that they are in Babylonian captivity. They are in captivity for the span of 70 years. And they're in captivity because of the disobedience that they uh, did unto the Lord and wouldn't listen to the Lord. The Lord told them that everything that he had given, he'd take away from them. And so we realize that that's where they're at. We realize that they're in a place where they're down. He said they sat down and, and yea, we wept when we remember Zion. I, I can imagine a group of people, a group of Israelites, maybe in the daily, maybe after the daily task or during the daily task that they have, being slaves of the Babylon, getting by a river somewhere and just sitting down, and the memories of what they had at one time flooding their soul. And it says that they that carried uh, carried them away captive come to them. So these people of Babylon come to them. And they required, they said, why don't you sing a song? We want you to sing one of them songs that you used to sing. And uh, it says, sing us one of those songs of Zion. They asked the question, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Now, in tying that back with Exodus chapter number 15, and looking at these different things, in verse number 1 of chapter number 15, the Bible says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song, unto the Lord. So this is a song that they sung at one time. This was a song that they sung at one time. It says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously, and the horse and his rider hath he thrown unto the sea. In studying the Bible, there is a principle that you use sometimes. It's called the first mentioned principle. That if you see a word or see a, a particular subject taking place for the first time in the Bible, you kind of go back to that and it kind of sets a lot of groundwork for that very thing that is either going on or that word or the things surrounding that word. Just a, a tool, you would say, in studying the Bible. I always, if, if, if there's a, a time when I'm preaching and preaching on a certain subject, mercy or grace or the blood or anything like that, you go back and kind of look at the first time that it was mentioned and the things going on just kind of helps you draw a bull from it. In verse number 15, and, and or, excuse me, verse number 1 of chapter number 15, this is the first time in your Bibles that you will see the words sing, sing, and song. All three of those, this is the very first time that you see all three of those words. It says, then sang Moses and the children of Israel, uh, this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord. So sing, song, and sing. Amen. That sounds like Chinese tonight, doesn't it? Sing, song, sing. And uh, so we realize that these are the, the first time that, uh, I, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. I've got everybody. 
Uh, but anyway, it just kind of comes to my mind. But, but anyway, so, um, you know, it's the first time that you mention it, so, or it, that it's mentioned, and so I think it's interesting. Uh, what I'm going to preach on tonight, or start preaching on tonight, uh, I believe we'll still be here on, on Sunday, uh, but um, we'll go home and then we'll come back for Sunday. Okay? <laughs> Let me clear that up. Somebody's already, you've already started to get nervous. We'll be here until Sunday. Uh, but um, but I want to I want to preach on seeking my lost song, seeking my lost song. And we see the reason I read that over in Psalm one thirty seven. It says that they hung their harps on the willows. Now a willow tree, you realize you look at a willow tree, it's called a weeping willow, and so you just see sadness even around the tree that it's hung on, but realize that they had hung their harps on the willows, and they asked us they asked the question, they said, How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? And we may ask that our, ourselves today. Uh, we're living in strange times. We're living in a strange world. And uh, it's, it's hard to sing the Lord's song every day of our life in this strange world. I, I say this, we can Amen. have a song. And, and I, I think about in, in this chapter, I, I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself and then come back. But in this chapter, so in verse number one, this is the first time that singing a song is mentioned in your Bible. And I want you to notice how quickly it stops. By verse number 24, the people are murmuring in the same chapter. They're singing in verse number 1, and they are murmuring and complaining about their situation, things going on around about them, by verse number 24. And I, I got to thinking about that, uh, Brother Curtis, and I got to thinking about, isn't that just like we are today? I mean, you'd be singing the Lord's song at one time, and then before you know it, you're starting to murmur and complain about circumstances and different things like that that's going on. I appreciate what Brother Sanford had opened up with, and I believe this this maybe this maybe since you've been the song being the song leader, this this uh, and I know that's where your heart is, and, and maybe this this will uh, this will uh, hit with you. But I'd say you'd be honest with yourself, even being a song leader. There's been some days where you've lost the song, and uh, and and it's 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 one thing to come in and sing a song. You know, Brother Sanford stands up and says, "Turn page, you know, one twenty-four or whatever," and we all sing the song. Just because we're singing a song doesn't mean we have the song of our heart in tune with the Lord. You can sing all day long. We can start page number one, sing all the red. All the, the hymns and the red back book that we want to still doesn't mean by the end of the day you have a song in your heart. Right. And so, I, I, and there again, I'm getting uh, getting ahead of myself. But in seeking the Lord's song, I want I want to focus in on two things that we'll find in this chapter and the chapter surrounding it. First of all, I want to look at the starting place of the song. And then I want to look at the stopping place of the song. We're not going to get to the stopping place of the song. But I want you to understand this. The song does quickly stop for the children of Israel from verse number 1 to verse number 24. And I, I, wonder, this, I wonder this tonight, and for the times that we'll be dealing with this, I wonder if you'd be honest with yourself and, 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 and maybe... Look inside yourself and wonder if you have lost the song of your heart, your, your heart's song. I, I, hope, I hope that you know what I'm talking about. I want, I want to look at two different things real quickly. First of all, there's two places where a song can be found. I want you to turn to Colossians chapter number 3. And these are familiar verses, but I want to turn over there just to kind of give us direction on the subject that we're talking about on the song. And so in Colossians chapter number 3, it's in the New Testament. Colossians chapter number 3, 
And if those books trip you up on, you know, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, and all that stuff, always remember this. Go eat potato chips. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Go eat potato chips. They toss that in Bible talk. You know that? Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. All these different things that we remember. Maybe that I'll stick with you. You don't get anything in them. But in Colossians 3 and 16, it says this. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. In the context of this scripture in Colossians chapter number 3, he's talking about love and he's talking about encouragement of the brethren. And so it says in verse number 14, and above all these things, but on charity, which is the bond of, uh, of, of perfectness. Um, in verse number 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, uh, even as Christ forgave you, ye also do. So it's talking about the relationship between people. He comes down to verse number 16 and says, in, uh, it says, teaching and admonishing one another. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So the song that he's talking about in Colossians chapter number 3 is a song that can be heard. It is a song that is sung with the lips. He's talking about singing songs. I believe that's why it's important in a church service to sing songs, to sing hymns. I, I, I think a lot of times it sits... Uh, sets maybe even the atmosphere, maybe a, a song that really hits the hearts of the people, sometimes it set the atmosphere for the whole service. And so uh, we think about, well, we're just standing up and singing because we're supposed to sing and Sandra told us to sing, but really in singing these songs and singing these hymns, we're really helping one another. Uh, I think that that's what you think about. I don't think there's any better singing than choir singing. I love groups. I love, I love to listen to quartets and groups and different things like that. But there's just something about a choir. I believe when we get to heaven, I believe it's going to be a heavenly choir. Amen. I don't think there's going to be quartets and different things like that. It's going to be everybody together singing. I, I appreciate that. So in Colossians 3, the song is something that can be heard out loud that he's talking about. In Ephesians chapter number 5, so if we go backwards to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 19, it says this, and this is a very familiar verse. Verse number 18 says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Verse number 19 says this, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now Colossians 3 was talking about singing to one another. This is talking about singing to yourself. And psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. And so realize this, I want you to understand there's two places that a song resonates or a song is found. First of all, it is found in the heart. And then second of all, a song is something that can be heard. It comes out of your mouth. In Colossians chapter number 3, we're talking about something that is a, a public song, something that you would hear. And something that you would use to encourage your brothers and sisters in Christ. These songs and different things like that. That's public. In, in Ephesians chapter number 5, he's talking about a personal song. I, I believe this with all my heart. Now, you, you, you can disagree with me if you want to. I don't think that you will. You can disagree with me if you want to, though. But I believe this with all my heart. I believe a song is from the heart. And then comes a, a, the Lord's song. Begins in the heart and then comes out the mouth. That's why, that is why you get on YouTube or anything that you like to listen to, and you can look up choirs, quartets, and different things like that. And you can, maybe, maybe there's a song that you like or you're interested in or you come across and you try to find somebody that is singing that song where maybe you can get the melody and sing along with it or something like that. And then some of them, uh, some of them, you know, they are the most talented people. And maybe they have a great title. You know, you know, you might have a title of being a great singer. And you may have a title of being a great singing talent. But then if you take somebody with the same song that's got the touch of God on their life. Amen. And they may not sing every note in tune. Right. And they may not hit everything just so-so. 
but they got the touch of God on them. You can feel a difference in that song, and that's because of this reading. You say, preacher, why is that? That's because of this. It's coming from here, not from here, not from here. It's coming from here and coming out of that. Not in the head, not knowing it, not knowing how to sing. You may be a genius and do the the, the do so fa la mi re do's and all that stuff, and that that's great. That's important. I, I I'm not diminishing that. That that's important. It really is, and and I I envy people that that can do that. But still, yet you can be somebody that don't know all the do re mi's. Just have the touch of God on your life and get up and say, I want to sing a song or, or a choir getting together and singing a song and God touching that thing and blessing that thing. And I'm telling you what, people will shout the house top down. Why is that? I, I think a lot of uh, Preacher Quincy used to always give the story of there was a, a great professor stood up and read the 23rd Psalm and said he just, I mean, and all the punctuation was, was right and good and he had one of those. Uh, he had one of those voices, like the guy that does the recording of the, the Bible that you like, Scorby, Andrew Scorby. You know, if you ever listen to the, the audio Bible, a lot of times it's Andrew Scorby's verse, uh, voice and stuff like that. Had a voice, and he he read everything just right. And said, "There's an old." Uh, he sat down and said, "There's an old preacher stood up and said his voice was cracking. He said he couldn't hardly." read stuff and he was stuttering around and different things like that but said he read the 23rd psalm and said there wasn't a dry eye in the building and said the the, the professor was asking somebody or somebody asked the professor after the service said why is it that everybody was crying after that preacher got done reading the 23rd psalm he said well i knew the 23rd psalm but he knew the shepherd right. that's the difference in singing a song Amen. knowing the song or then knowing the savior of the song Amen. Amen. And so I, I think about that a lot. But uh, I, 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 so we understand this. Even if you can't sing, maybe you can't carry a tune in a bucket tonight. I don't know. I ain't, gonna, I ain't heard you while you're singing in the shower or anything like that. But maybe you, maybe you can't sing, but you still have a song in your heart. Amen. Speaking to yourselves in spiritual psalms and hymns. That's talking about, that is... That is important in being filled with the Holy Ghost. That is, that is a thing. That is a, I guess it is a sign of being filled with the Holy Ghost, yes. But it's also a help and a strengthening of being filled with the Holy Ghost is speaking to yourself in spiritual psalms and hymns. I mean, there's a lot to be said. But in looking at the starting place of the song, and I'm not even going to get close I want to, I want to, I want to address this. What makes a song a song? We see in Exodus 15, a lot of different things surrounding the, the word song here. What makes a song a song? You ever thought about that? You find in Exodus 15, verse number 2, let, let's just read down through there. Let's go back to Exodus 2, or 15 and 2. 15 and 1 says, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he hath thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. Now, do we understand this? This is after they have just gotten through the Red Sea. That's why I read verse number 31. And Israel saw... 31 and 14. And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord in his servant Moses. Amen. And automatically they began singing a song. I don't think this is a rehearsed song. Right. I believe this is what come to their heart, what come to their mouth. I wonder, I wondered this. I wondered this. I wondered if it was like uh, everybody, everybody, uh, heard the way primitive Baptists sing a song where they call lining a song where they'll where they'll say say the line of the song. Anybody, anybody been around that? The a lot of times the elder will say, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. And then people catch up and go, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but 
now I see was blind, but now I see. As I was reading this, I, I thought to myself, I wonder if that's the way Moses did. I wonder if Moses, it said that Moses and the children of Israel sang this song. I wonder if Moses said the line and then they sang the same line after. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. But in verse number three, it says this, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he hath cast into the sea. He hath chosen captains and are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank to the bottom as a stone. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemies. And the greatness of thine excellency, thou hast overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thou uh, sendest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as a heap. And the, the depths were congealed uh, in the heart of the sea. And the enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. Thou didst blow thy wind. The sea covered them. Do you see what a great song that they're singing and praising God for what they had just witnessed him do? And so I thought to myself, in the first mention of this, we see what makes a song a song. First of all, and there's more verses to that, you go down and read them uh, later time, but that gets the, the, the gist of it. But what makes a song is this, first of all, there's a focus on the master. Right, what makes a song a song of the Lord? What makes a song have the touch of God on it? It focuses and it magnifies our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God of heaven. This, this that we see sung here, I, you can, I tried to count it the best I could, and I think I'm a pretty good counter, but, but I, I said I was, I, was, I was messing up and having to go back and different things like that. But I want you to understand this. In verses number 1 through 21, in 1 through 21, so in 21 verses, 49 to 50 times, you'll see Lord, or Him, or He, or Thee, or Thou, or Thine. 50 times in 21 verses, it references the God they serve. The capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah God, the three in one, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. The God who they had put their faith and trust in. The God that they saw just bring them through the Red Sea experience. And so what makes a song a song is, first of all, there is a focus on the master. Let me say this. Secondly, it talks of his mind. It talks of his miracles. It talks of his majesty. And it talks of him making a way for man. It gets on down through there. It says in verse number 12, Thou stretchest out thy right hand. The earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy hath led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto a holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Philistia. And then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold of them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as a stone till thy people pass over. O oh Lord! Till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance in a place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in. In the sanctuary, O Lord, which the hands have established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. For the horse of Pharaoh went in with his chariots and with his horsemen to the sea. And the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land. Praise God. Hallelujah. The children of Israel. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Then it says this. And Miriam and 
And the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and dances. And Miriam answered them, saying, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider have he thrown into the sea, which is the very first verse that we see in verse number one. And you see how a song repeats itself in a chorus and different things like that. But we see here, and what makes a song a song and a Lord's song is it magnifies God. So many times in our world today, the song magnifies the person more than it does the Lord. Right. It really does. And I, I'm not saying, you know, I know that there's a lot of situational songs. There's a lot of, if you notice a lot of the new songs talk about brokenness and talking about being wounded or talking about being in a storm and different things like that. And by the end of the song, they'll talk about how the Lord delivered them. And that, that's great. That's wonderful. That connects with a lot of people. But I'm telling you what, there ain't nothing better than a song that just from the start to the finish just talks about the Lord and what the Lord's done. Yeah. And he does. And even in this song, and they do, they talk about how he made a way for them. God delivered them. What makes a song a song? Having the song of your heart is how God made a way for them. Then I want to look at this real quickly. Who sang this song? Not just what makes a song a song, but who sang this song? Well, it was Moses and the children of Israel. I want to look at them for just a minute. First of all, I want you to notice this. They were a difficult people. Weren't they? Children of Israel were a difficult people. They were stubborn. They were stubborn. And, and the Lord wanted them to do something and they wouldn't do it. Man, it, it, I mean, the Lord was trying to get them out of Egypt. And it's almost like they didn't want to go out of Egypt there for a while. And so all the things happened with the plagues and different things like that. But I know that these people that are singing right here are difficult people. You understand this? Whenever we get together and sing, you know who's singing the song of the Lord? A bunch of difficult people. I'm looking at a bunch of difficult people. You're messed up. I messed up. Amen. We're just like, I want you to understand this. Listen, and, 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 and them having this song, these were, these were a people that were a difficult people. Then let me say this. They were difficult people, but they were a desired people. Right, a desired people. And, and this is, we might just park right here and then go to the house. Well, we've got to have a business meeting, then we'll go to the house. But a desired people. Moses and the children of Israel, these are the apple of God's eye. Right. And, and let me say this, Israel is still the apple of God's eye. The promises to Israel, those that bless them, God will bless, and those that curse them, God will curse. We understand this, and, and, and Israel is still loved by God. We understand that. I thank God I'm part of the church. Amen. You know what the church is? Church is the bride of Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not a Jew. I'm not. I'm not part of the. Pro, I don't have the same promises as the children of Israel. But God loved them, and I know this. God loved the church because God gave His only begotten Son to bleed and to die for the church. And if the church would look at just how much they're loved, I promise you this: you'll find the starting place for your song. So where did the song start at? Who, who did it start with? Is is a people that was loved. Do we see through all of this what God is doing for Israel? That He just loves them. That He just wants to love them. He He saw them back there in the earlier chapters of Exodus. He saw the bondage that they were in. He saw the workload that they were under. He saw that, and, and, and He the Bible talks about. He remembered the promises and the covenants that He made with Abraham and Isaac, and Jacob. And God said, that's my people, and I'm going to deliver those people. They're a desired people, but they're also a delivered people. Amen. Singing the song. A delivered people. Amen. Who's singing the song? Moses. Not just Moses. Not just, boy, it, it, it's tough sometimes when you, when you feel like you're singing all by yourself, don't you? I know you've talked about that before. So, but it's, it's nice when everybody gets in on the singing. Amen. Amen. And we see here a place in time when Moses and the children of Israel, listen, they are a delivered people. I want you to notice this. They were delivered. They were redeemed out of Egypt. But I want you to notice this. Now I ain't out of the Bible here. They didn't sing the song. Let me, let me ask you this. 
When were they redeemed? Was it after the Red Sea? No. That group of people were redeemed as soon as that blood was applied on the doorpost of the They were a redeemed people then. God could have killed them at the Red Sea and they died a redeemed people. Right. And But notice this. They didn't sing then. They didn't sing when they come out. They didn't sing then. But when they saw the deliverance of God. And notice this. When they saw Pharaoh was destroyed. Now I know this and I believe you agree with me. Brother Jimmy, I didn't know everything when I got saved. I didn't know just what I got when I got saved. But man, it, it does something for me when I see a little bit more and a little bit more Amen. of what God's done for me what and what he did for me when he saved my soul, when he redeemed me. Amen. I believe this with all my heart. This song was born at a time when they realized that Pharaoh, a type of the devil, had been defeated in their life. They look back, is that not what it says? And Israel saw the great work that God did. When I got saved, I didn't know everything about the great work of redemption that God did. But every time, Sister Abel, I, I see something that God did in his plan of redemption since then. And it puts a song right here. A song of deliverance. We see here that they are a delivered people. They are a redeemed people. But then notice this. They're also a rescued people. Time and time again, God rescued them. He rescued them. They, they come up, up against the Red Sea. God should have killed them right then when they started murmuring and complaining and saying, Moses, you brought us out here to kill us. God God been just. He'd been justified and just killing them right then. But he told Moses, he said, you stretch your hand out. You stretch the rod of God over the sea. He said, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. They've done been redeemed. But just, just let me show you what I can do. Now I'm telling you that's where a song starts. There's a lot of people who make a profession of faith and get saved. But never develop a song in here. Right. Because it's never fed. It's never grown upon. It's never expounded upon. Some people, I believe there's some people I've seen come to the church and truly get saved. I, 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 I could be totally wrong. I don't know. Listen, I don't know who's saved and who's lost even here tonight. But I, you know what I'm saying. I, I've seen people truly, I believe, truly get it. But then they distance themselves from the Lord, either in their lifestyle or in the life, or, or they don't get rooted and grounded, they don't read their Bibles, they don't pray, they don't, they don't study to show themselves approved, and, and different things like that. And a song is never developed. I, I want to say this, it's very possible for you to be saved and still yet not have a song in your heart. The song of your heart. The Bible talks about the joy of the Lord is our strength. That joy, I don't think there's anything greater than a show of joy than having a song and melody that's born inside of right here. And so I believe this, I, although we know this, I want you to understand this. Some people would have died redeemed if they'd never been through the Red Sea. They'd died redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Same thing for us. You can get saved, born again, you can die, redeemed, heaven bound, with a hammer, hammer bound, whatever you want to say. You're going to heaven. Praise God, hallelujah. Once saved, always saved. Right. Amen. That's Bible. That's biblical. Amen. Once saved, always saved. But I ask you this. Have you maybe never developed a song? Or and, and maybe that's maybe the struggles that some people have in their life. Maybe you've never developed a song. Or 
Maybe you've lost your song. These people here, they had a song, and then they lost a song. And so that's what we're trying to preach on. I, I, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's been, a, it, it's been a help to me. Maybe it's been a help to you. Everything okay? Couldn't get in the back. Okay. All right. All right. But I uh, hope it's been a help to you. And um, I appreciate you. I, I, I want you to know this. It doesn't matter if you sing or not. The song's in here. Hey. The song's in uh, here. Amen. That's where it is. And God, I, I believe this with all my heart. I believe if there's one thing that the devil robs saved people from, you you can't lose your salvation. Hey. Praise hey. God for that. You right. can't lose your salvation. But I tell you this, you can lose your song. Right. And if there's a day and time when people are losing their song, it's right now. Right. I mean, it, it's right now. I mean, not, I mean, the things that we deal with in the world, the circumstances that a lot of homes are in, different things like that, it's discouraging times for a lot of people. And I believe this with all my heart. I believe some people have lost their song. Yeah. I'm telling you, that, that's not a good place to be. Right. And we'll, we'll look at that later. That's not a good place to be when the song stops. Talk about where the song started tonight. When the song stops, it's not a good place to be. So I appreciate your good attention. I hope it'll be a help to you and a blessing to you. Look at some things around there. I feel like I've left some stuff out, but I hope it'll be a good So tonight is the church business conference. I will just go right up.